One of the hardest lessons that I had to learn was that it's okay that I'm not the right fit for everyone. Mm. It is okay. You know, every part of my core wants to be liked. I want people to be proud of me. I want people to appreciate me. I want them to see how hard I work. And the idea of rejection, I didn't win a listing. If I wasn't picked to be the representative for buyers, that was just so, so painful wow. for me because yeah. it, it made me go back and question, what did I do? Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another Knowledge Bomb episode of Lead to Greatness, where we believe in helping others reach their greatest potential and together change the world. Today on Lead to Greatness, we have Christy Jenkins. And if this is your first time, don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button, hit the notification bell so you won't miss any of these amazing episodes. And if you're on iTunes, go ahead and rate the podcast and leave a review. That helps get the word out to great leaders and entrepreneurs like yourself. Please help me welcome Christy with Master the Art of Customer Satisfaction. And you're listening to the lead to greatness. My name is Christy Jenkins. I am a managing broker for real. I have been working in the real estate industry for over 21 years uh, here just outside of Seattle in Sammamish, Washington. We're about 20 minutes outside of Seattle in the suburbs, so people mm -hmm. call the east side. Mm -hmm. um, and I have two grown daughters and a husband, and uh, I kind of fell into real estate. I think most people get into it intentionally, uh -huh. but uh, I really feel like I, I fell into it. I was working in corporate America for a big gaming company, uh, and I had my first daughter. And I just, uh, I wasn't sure that I wanted to leave her all mm -hmm. day, every day. And yet I knew deep down at my core that I had something more to offer mm. the business world and our financial freedom and all of that than, than to stay at home full time. And so it really, my mom was doing this. She and I were partners for many, many years wow. uh, in this. And it worked out really well because you know, childcare and, and real estate kind of go hand in hand for being accessible and available 24 seven to clients. And so it worked out for a number of years while I was raising my girls. And so that's why I say I kind of fell into it and then I fell in love with it. Wow. So it, it, it found me, I think. What, what do you love most about it? Um, I, I love that my clients become true friends. I, mm. I, I say that I'm, you know, a realtor for life. And I really believe that that's because it is a relationship based business. This is definitely not a transactional business. Like I think a lot of people, even a lot of real estate agents think that this is a sales job, a transactional job, but I have seen it from the very beginning as a very organically relationship based business where you are you're providing a valuable service. And if you're not looking at this as, you know, a, a long game as a way to build a long-term business, a career out of this, then, you know, it, it, then this is just a job and it's going to come and go. I have helped one client. I've helped he and his family buy and sell 12 properties oh my over the years. Uh, so some of them, primary residents, a few investment properties, a second home, his mom's home, his son's first home. So it's really exciting when you get to see that full journey. And I've also helped my parents move from the house that I grew up in, help them purchase the home that they ended up, you know, kind of finishing out their working years. And then mm -hmm. just before the pandemic, I moved them into a retirement community. So Amazing. It's, it's just really fun to go full circle with people and see their different stages and be invited to their kids' graduations and, you know, go over for dinner and see what they've mm -hmm. done to the house after they've uh, moved in and kind of made some changes. But really, it's it's definitely my favorite part of this job. Well, that's pretty cool. I was actually looking on your, your website and I thought it was phenomenal. Um, you okay. click on it, it starts off with the home, the videos that's going on, and then you're talking, you're walking out. And I, I really want you to kind of open us up with the idea behind this because it was warming, it was inviting. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you're in Seattle, I'm in Texas. I'm like, man, I want to meet her. I, I want to work with her. I'm really trying to express and really trying to explain how I felt, but I, I really, honestly, I don't know. I just know I felt good. Yeah. What, what's, what, what, what's the deal with that? I don't even what's know to call deal? it or whatever. What, what, <laughs> yeah. what happened? What, was this intentional? I, I, I feel like, you know, you hit the nail on the head. People look 
for real estate objectively, but they buy subjectively. They Mm. buy because they fall in love with something. They buy because they see their kids growing up in that area. They see that they're going to be, you know, family movie nights in that media room. They see what they're going to, you know, turn this area into. And so I think when you can create a story Mm. about that home from the very beginning, I think that you bridge that gap between looking for a house and finding a home. And that's why I think that storytelling is so important. It's what I really try and do, not just in my videos to introduce me for people to get to know me, because there's a story behind me and what I do and what I do for you. But for every home that I sell too, there's a story. All of my clients put together a top 10 list. Mm. What did they love about the home? It could be the house itself or the yard or the community or, you know, where they walked their dog. It could be anything about it, but you connect that family that's leaving to the family that's coming in and you have this immediate organic connection and they Mm -hmm. feel like they're already part of the home, part of the, part of the story of this home. That's just a continuation. Yeah. Well, I'll tell my family. videographer he got kudos today. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, it was really, yeah. really amazing job. I, a lot of that I learned when several years ago when I started working with Ryan Serhant, and he's really big on storytelling. That mm. is, I think that's his superpower. He connects with people in a really authentic, unique way. He is as you know, goofy and self-deprecating and warm and and kind as he is in person as he is on on TV. But he, aside from that, he really has this generous spirit about him. And I think what he really has done incredibly well is kind of bring us into his world a little bit. Mm. And his world from an acting side, it it, it combines, you know, you not like you're putting on a face or acting when you're talking to people, but you're you're engaging with them, you're bringing them in, and not just talking at them, but you're really starting a very authentic conversation about what they want, what they need, what their pros and cons are, you know, a lot of times the the spouses or partners, you know, they have very different ideas Mm -hmm. about what the ideal home looks like. And it's, it's really understanding and getting to the core of what are they looking for? Who is the decision maker? You know, that's part of the process too. You may have one who's a lot stronger in the decision maker process. You may have one that doesn't talk a lot. And maybe that's because they really don't have that much of an an investment. They really are going to be happy with how it turns out because they're not as definitive in what their wants and needs are. They just want to make their partner, their spouse happy too. And Mm. that's okay as well. But I think it's really important to have those really authentic conversations so that you understand, all right, I've got a resource for that, or let's, let's pivot. Let's, I don't think they've thought of this area. And I think this really fits their needs or, you know what, they've been saying that they didn't want a backyard, but all I keep hearing them talking about is, you know, putting that place set out in the backyard and having a Mm -hmm. shed and doing a fence. You can't do that in these, you know, zero lot line properties that we've been looking at. So I think it really is just listening and understanding and having a lot of resources to go back to and say, all right, let's, let's pivot a little bit. Let's, let's change directions. And what I've learned is sometimes people don't even know what they want. They, they, they never really thought about it. And here you are not just selling, but giving them what they want, even when they didn't know they want it. Like you were talking about the items in the backyard. I mean, let's talk about, have you always been like, you know, just this, this is just a natural thing for you? Or is it something that you learn? And if it's something yeah. that you learn, what was that aha that, that that got you into this is the way to do it? I think for a long time, you know, I, I think we all are products of, you know, you, you don't know what you don't know. You know, mm-hmm. I, I grew up and I was very, I say classically trained because I was classically trained as a pianist, but I was classically trained as a real estate agent too. Uh, you know, you write contracts and you, you send them across and you negotiate and you try and get to a point where everybody meets in the middle a little bit. And for a lot of years, that's how I did my business. I think that's how a lot of people did their business. And then you introduce social media and you introduce market, you know, different marketing techniques and you introduce AI. And, you know, you talk about all these different pieces of the puzzle that all fit in together. And you start interacting with agents in other areas of the country and you realize that not everybody does it the same way. And you realize that people are willing to share what they're doing, what they're having success with. And 
you get all these new ideas. And I think it was about five years ago, maybe six years ago, that it really clicked for me that this process, this, this whole idea of buying and selling homes could be really different. Mm -hmm. And that's when it really, you know, it, it changed. There was definitely a change in my mind that kind of shifted the way that I went about approaching things. And, you know, the, the idea that it's not about the brokerage that I represent, but it's about me and the brand mm. that I've created, that people yeah. are attracted to me and what I have to offer. And they're going to come yeah. back to me. Um, you know, that was a really big shift too. And, and Sir Hans team was really a big, a part of that as well, because it just opened my eyes to the idea that it could be done differently. And mm. I loved that. I, I loved that. I got to kind of put a fresh, spin on this thing that I'd already been doing for a very long time. I think before it felt like a job, it was, and, and I, and I love that, you know, every day is different and there's still so many components of what I do that haven't changed, but my outlook on how I can service people and how I can help integrate them into the community. I think that's a huge part of my job and why I focus mm -hmm. on this area of Sammamish that I know so well is because I have the ability to connect them with the resources and introduce them to the coaches and the teachers that are going to be at their kids' elementary school and, and make sure that they know about the dance studio that's just down the road and, mm -hmm. and my favorite restaurants. And when you can help integrate people into a community, you know, I think that really changed for me. And like it is for a lot of real estate agents, I will still go anywhere that my clients need me to go. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't just stay in Sammamish, but it changed kind of the focus of what my business growth and trajectory was, because I just knew that if I was going to do this for another 20 plus years, I needed to really find a very clear path and a very mm -hmm. clear lane. And to me, nothing makes more sense than working in the area that you know and love the best. Mm -hmm. This is good. This is really good. Um, it, we're really uh, definitely learning. I, you mentioned Orion Serhan uh, earlier. I mean, he's one of the top uh, real estate brokers, I mean, in at least yeah. in the U.S. How has, you know, him as an individual influenced your leadership style and your approach uh, yeah. to mentoring others? Um, I think I one of the biggest things that he taught me was it is about who you surround yourself with. It is about mm. curating a team that fills in all of the pieces that maybe you can't fill, either because that's not your specialty, it's not um, your skill, maybe it's what you hate doing, you know, I mean, all of those things. If you've got a team in place around you that you can trust that operates to the same high level that you do, that has the same standards that you know, answers phone calls right away that responds to emails immediately that problem solves with a creative mind, you know, all of those things, if you surround yourself with those people, you are going to be exponentially successful. And I think that is his leadership style. I have met more top high level, amazing individuals through my connections with him than I have met in the past 48 years of my life. I mean, it's just the introductions that he's given me to people that are kind of in his inner circle and the way that that has branched out has made a tremendous impact on me. And it, and it encourages me, you know, to, to be, I, I got into this and this is kind of backtracking a little bit, but I got into this to show my girls that you can do anything you want to do. You can be a present parent. You can be, you can go to your kid's stuff. You can be a room mom. You can be the party mom. That's what I did for most of my girls. I, you know, did the parties in their classrooms and you can be a successful business owner. Mm. And I never wanted to put any expectations on them, except that we, my, my husband and I were going to support them 100% yeah. and that anything was possible. And I just felt like leading by example was the best way that I could show them that. Mm. And so I think that that just kind of continues now as I'm mentoring younger brokers and kind of figuring out how to, the idea about this job and what people, especially young people think about what we do and what what's involved and how easy or difficult it is, you know, that's very different than it was 20 plus years ago. And so I think that that kind of translates now into how do I help younger, newer brokers 
understand what their value is, what their skills are, how does that fit into this workplace and how are they going to be successful? I met with a guy, uh, a very new broker at a coffee shop uh, just a couple of weeks ago. And, you know, he was asking what, you know, what, what should I do to, to build my business? You know, do I, do I go door knocking? Or, you know, do I just host a bunch of open houses? You know, I think I can, I think I can talk to, you know, 80 people a day doing this. And I, I said to him, I said, okay, let's, let's pull back a little bit. What are you really good at? Well, I've been told I need to do, no, 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 no. What are you really good at? You're really good with people. Okay. You're good face to face. I talked to him on the phone. I knew he wasn't nearly as good on the phone, cold calling people that like that is probably not in his mm. wheelhouse, but face to face, he's warm. He's friendly. He asks a lot of good questions. So let's draw on this part of your personality. So in terms of where he would fit best, I think he needs to understand where his skills are. He's also young. Social media is his, his thing. He's really good with creating content and editing videos. So we really took a step back and evaluated what are his strengths? What are his weaknesses? He doesn't have a big network of people. He doesn't have a lot of leads. So in terms of bringing something to a team or a brokerage, he's got to understand what he can bring to the table. Too many people are just feed me, feed me, feed me, give me leads, give me opportunities. No, no, you've got to go in and say, what value can I provide? Prove your value. Mm -hmm. And then see what comes back in return from that. And I think that's just a a shift in kind of how a lot of young people think these days. You know, it's up to you to prove your value first before people should feel compelled to give you back something. Christy, that is a knowledge (laughs) bomb. This is, I, I really, I have a twofold that I'm really dealing in my head. I'm like, man, you know, just time. So I, I, I'm really, I mean, cause you may, you, 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 you really got my mind going in some different directions. Uh, first of all, you talked about the young broker and you mentioned earlier about finding the right team. And then you talked about strength and weaknesses. And I'm like, man, all this tie into the same thing. It's the same concept, you know, your weakness. Yeah. And, and I want to, because I think this is a challenge for most of us is finding the right team. How do yeah. we, how do we do that? I mean, you, you, you find somebody and you put them in place and they don't, it, I, it, you know, it, they don't fit the culture and yeah. how, how what, what, what mistakes are we making and how can we get this thing right? I think part of it comes back to, you know, who, you know, and how you originally got into this business. So uh-huh. is it, was it because of somebody who saw something in you Mm. and felt like this would be a good jump, a good step. And if that's the case, they probably knew you from a different um, job or career that you had before. Mm. So maybe they saw something in the skills that you were doing. Maybe you were an exceptional sales person at a different job, or maybe you were a connector. Mm. You know, maybe, maybe you were, you know, good at numbers and financial, and they felt like that connection was kind of what was missing in some teams. So first of all, to talk to people that already know you and trust you, and maybe kind of already see that connection. But beyond that, I do think that there are some brokerages that have a really good training platform who are good at connecting new agents with more experienced teams that they can help that. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think that that skill assessment is so imperative. Because if you go in and you're asking to be fed, but you don't really know what value you can bring, and that's, you got to kind of deep dive into knowledge, whether that's, you know, uh, there's so many different books and ways that you can kind of get to the the core of what, what your skills are. But I think ultimately, unless you're, you know, fresh out of college, which I think still a lot of young people know, you know, some of their skills and abilities then, but if you've been in any kind of career, draw from that, draw from what your experience, you know, gave you in that former career and build off of that. And that's how you find, I think you, you also look around and see, you know, what, who do I respect in this industry? And you go and you talk to them, you know, have coffee, offer to take them out to coffee or for a glass of wine or, you know, whatever, and talk to them about their journey and what their needs are. And I think those conversations just build those natural connections. Knowledge. Um, this is really good. <laughs> and the thought came to me is somebody asking to be fed, but don't know what they want to eat. Yeah. You know, it's like really it's like trying to understand that part. What, what, what do you have the hunger for? 
What do yeah. you, you know, what, what do you want to, what do you feel like eating before you ask someone to feed you? I mean, this is really, yep. man, this is really great. This is really, really, really amazing stuff. You, you did the assessment, you know, your strengths. And so what do you do with the weakness? I think you look at the weakness as opportunity for growth. Mm. It's, it's not a weakness. It just hasn't had the opportunity to stretch yet. Right. Mm. Mm. There, there are things that I'm not great at and I either have a team that supports me or I figure out how to improve my skills mm. in that area so that it doesn't become a weakness or so it doesn't become a weakness that impedes me from doing my job. Mm -hmm. You know, it might still not ever be something that I'm exceptional at or that I love to do, but it can end up becoming something that doesn't keep me from doing something that I want to do or need to do. And so you look for opportunities for that, you know, that growth and whether that's from mentoring or whether that's from reading or whether that's kind of seeking out some additional knowledge. I think you look at weakness as a temporary setback, not as something that can't grow. Yeah. And this goes back to how I build my business from the very beginning. But I think the people who are around me are people that know and trust me the yeah. most. Mm. So it's much deeper than just a, you know, a, a business relationship. It is a partnership. Mm. And I think my videographer, not to harp on him, but he is, we've been doing this for a couple of years together and doing social media, starting social media over the age of 40 mm. is not an easy thing to do. Yeah, and absolutely. I started off, you know, you get all these ideas and advice and, you know, I got the gimbal and I got all this equipment and I got the microphone and the, you know, all that. And ultimately I dreaded every <laughs> time I had to get um, on the camera and it yeah. prohibited me from utilizing and kind of doing this part of my job yeah. because I was doing it on my own. It was something that I didn't like. I didn't know how to do. I wasn't doing it well. It freaked me out. And it ultimately like made me nauseous every time I thought about doing it. So yeah. I knew I needed that piece, somebody who knew me, who understood kind of how I talk and how I move, but who also wanted to get me on my comfort zone a little bit mm. because he also is, you know, knows what is popular, what people are looking for, what connects with people, what is really going to show me, but in a light that people want to see and how they better understand me. And so I think it's about having people around you who know you, but who also push you a little mm. bit, and push your boundaries. Mm. So to that end, you know, I've got an executive assistant who handles a lot of the details of my my paperwork and just kind of keeps me on track and calendaring and sensory me, me reminders. And I'm a, I'm a firstborn type A perfectionist mm. with a little OCD. So <laughs> I don't need like a ton of help with a lot of that stuff, but it freed me up from feeling like that was taking up so much of my brain space, keeping yeah. it together. Yeah. So sometimes even the stuff that you do well, you just need to free up that space and mm. that time my goodness. so that you can do other stuff. Mm. Well, I still want to build my team it, so that I it. feel like not because I want to do more business necessarily, but because I want to continue doing it at the level that I've been doing it. But as this business and this job gets more complex, there's things that, you know, have helped like AI, if you learn to use AI, and I've embraced a lot of the pieces of AI and figured out how, how I can make it work for me. Yeah. But there's also a lot of things that take more time. And that do take more energy and you've got to have some resources to be able to, to do that too. So once you get the team or you, you get there, like what's your next focus? I, I love the, I, I love, I think one of the things that is missing so much in this industry is a heavy focus on being incredibly well-trained. Mm -hmm. I think that people have a negative idea of real estate agents for one of two reasons. They've either had a really bad experience in the past Absolutely. and that's tainted their view going forward, yeah. or they just don't understand what we do and how, how it is that we've gotten to the place that we've gotten to. They don't. And it's not just about putting out a list on social media, the 64 things that realtors do. It's so much deeper than that. And I think unless we can prove and show our value there's going to be a huge mass exodus from this job because people just can't, 
they can't sustain everything that's required. So I would love to be involved in more of the teaching and training aspect of other agents. I think that could be very, very valuable for people to see this job done in a different way, at a higher level, at a higher level of expectation and with more skills and training and grace for other agents. And, you know, that, that I think is, is missing. So I would love to be more a part of that and do, you know, kind of more speaking on client loyalty and, and really how to, how to build this as a career rather than just doing this as a job. Mm, That's good. What are some practical leadership growth tips, tool advice that you can share with the lead to greatness community to help us reach our greatest potential? Yeah. Um, I think one of the hardest lessons that I had to learn was that it's okay that I'm not the right fit for everyone. Mm. It is okay. I, you know, every part of my core wants to be liked. I want people to be proud of me. I want people to appreciate me. I want them to see how hard I work. And the idea of rejection is like for a long time was a paralyzing fear for me. So if I didn't win a listing, if I didn't, you know, I wasn't picked to be the representative for buyers, I, that was just so, so painful wow. for me because yeah. it, it made me go back and question, what did I do wrong? How, mm. you know, what, why, why did I fail at this mm. instead of going, it is okay that I am not the right fit for mm. everybody. And there could be a lot of reasons as a real estate agent too. I think for a long time, I didn't really understand too, that a lot of people closest to me they may not want me to know their financial position. Mm. They may not want me to know that them and their spouse don't really agree on a whole lot of things. Yeah. They may not want me to see them under some of the biggest stressors that they have in their life. And that can be a very real reason that people don't choose somebody that they know. So for you know a long time, I think being understanding wow. that I'm enough for most people, and I'm mm. not the right fit for a few, I-, I had to learn to be okay with that. I'm not everyone's cup of tea, but that's because I'm wine. And not everybody <laughs> loves wine. <laughs> I love it. Definitely so, so amazing. Oh, Christy, hats off to you. Uh, with everything you. that you're doing, such amazing, amazing job in what you're doing. Thank, Thank you, you so for doing uh, what you're doing and adding value. Uh, to others, adding value to the, the Lead to Greatness community. Thank you. Yeah. If someone wants to connect with you and what you're doing, where should they go? You can find me all over social media at, at Christy Jenkins Real Estate. I'm real consistent on there. I've got YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and then ChristyJenkinsRealEstate.com is my website. And as a true real estate agent, I have got my phone with me 24 seven, much to my husband's dismay sometimes late at night. Um, <laughs> but I answer my phone, text. I'm very, very responsive, 206-406-1970. And I, uh, I pride myself on making sure that I'm available to my clients. So. Amazing. On behalf of the Lead to Greatness community, I want to thank you so very much for taking time out of your busy schedule and adding value to us all. Absolutely. My pleasure. We want to thank you for joining us today on the Lead to Greatness podcast. So remember, if you help others reach their greatest potential, together we can change the world. Peace.